Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, Resurrection Power, Dr. McLuhan shares three stories of people being touched by the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. The most important event in the history of the world is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. His resurrection offers hope to all who pass from this life to the next. The Apostle Paul was so clear about this when he said, I want you to know the Christ and to experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. This was a driving ambition in the Apostle Paul's life, to know Jesus and to know that power that raised him. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Through faith in what Jesus did for us on the cross, we can spend eternity in the presence of God What greater thrill could there be than that? Today I will share three resurrection stories of the power of God touching people and changing families permanently. From Kenya, Pastor Julius Anoya shared this story with me just this week. My sister called me to pray for her son just before he was going to be taken to the mortuary. I prayed for him and he was raised back to life. Today, he's a healthy seven-year-old boy. Come on, let's give the Lord some glory. Right out of Kenya, many of our friends here in, in the house today from Kenya. And this amazing story from Lahore, Pakistan, by Dr. Naoman Sharosh. Many people received Jesus as their savior and were healed during our Good Friday service yesterday. A family member called me saying, a young daughter, our young daughter has collapsed with no pulse and no heartbeat. They took her to the hospital where doctors pronounced her dead on arrival. She had no life in her. I prayed for the family over the phone and God raised her back to life. (laughs) Yeah. The doctors examined her again with all the tests that they could give her. They have no idea why she died, and they have no idea how she came back to life. (laughs) Dr. Sharos has preached here at Ingleside many times. I have no doubt these two stories are real, and they are proof that God is still raising people back to life and, of course, raising us to eternal life for all of time to come. If you just lost a child... I say to your child, precious one, arise in the name of Jesus. I call your spirit back to your body. Mother, take your phone and lay it on your child and play this prayer I've just said over your child. We call your one back to life right now. If that's you, there's no need to listen to this message any longer. You're experiencing resurrection power right where you are. For us, the third story that I'd like to share today is how Ali discovered the promise Jesus made to know for certain that we will be in paradise. Most people, majority religions of the world, have no certainty that they will live beyond their death unless somehow their deeds are good enough for them. So Ali was born in Iran to a strict Muslim family. When he was five years old, his family moved to upstate New York where he was raised. His mother warned him about Americans who would try to tell him about Jesus. In Ali's words, he said, my mother sprayed me with all the Jesus repellent she could find so that I wouldn't be suspect to following and knowing Jesus. As his story unfolds, you'll learn that her efforts were not enough to keep Ali from being attracted to the incredible love of Jesus. Ali remembers looking down on Americans, most do, think we're dirty and uneducated and inferior to him and sinful. Yet Ali had a respect for those who tried to share their faith with him, even though he did his best to destroy them and to be mean. In elementary school, he became friends with a boy from a Christian family. And one evening, he was invited to have dinner with the family. The boy's family respectfully invited Ali to join them as they prayed over their meal. Now, Ali discovered 
that this family, when they prayed, something was different. It was very different from what he was used to, used to hearing. Their prayers had an intimacy and a warmth, like they knew God, and not like the distance Ali felt any time that he tried to talk to God and recite Arabic words. Now, as soon as Ali's parents found out that he had heard this Christian prayer, they immediately forbid him from seeing that young boy any longer. In time, Ali graduated from high school and went on to choose a college. And while he was in college, he said, you know, I should get to know more about my religion. I should study Islam. And to do that, he joined the Muslim Student Association. And there he ran into a big problem. The Muslim Student Association was mostly Sunni, but Ali was Shia like the rest of most Muslims living in Iran. Uh, Ali was surprised to discover that they were not at all welcoming of him at the Muslim Student Association. Ali asked them to take him to the mosque, but they didn't want to. And when eventually they did take him, he found out that no one in the mosque would shake his hand. He could put his hand out, but his hand was rejected because he was Shia and not Sunni. And when he asked the most respected teacher how to recite Arabic prayers, he refused to teach him. All of this was just completely shocking to Ali, who believed there was a fraternity between all Muslims. During one of his summer breaks, as students are often wont to do, uh, he went to Myrtle Beach, not just to the beach, but to be a lifeguard on that beach. And he was invited by a student passing by his stand to come to their church that evening and have a free meal. And many of the lifeguards went, and so Ali said, well, what will it hurt to get some free food? I'm a poor student trying to get a little bit, so he went. And they were some of the friendliest people that Ali had ever met. Not only that, they were happy that a Muslim had come to eat with them. They were shaking his hand and making him feel like he was one of them. This was very different from the rejection Ali had experienced at the Sunni mosque in upstate New York. And for the first time in his life, Ali heard stories of how God answered the prayers of those young people. They would pray and God would answer and they would share what God had done in their lives. This was shocking to Ali. Now, Ali rented a room in a hotel that was right on the beach where he worked. In fact, the hotel was right directly behind his stand. Get up, have breakfast, and walk to his lifeguard stand and be there all day. Now, what Ali did not know is that Karen, the owner of the hotel, was a follower of Jesus. And she often rented rooms at a discounted rate, not only to lifeguards, but to church youth groups who came to the beach for a week to share their journey with beachgoers and with lifeguards. And so every week, young people would stop by his lifeguard stand and offer Ali a bottle of cold water. And sometimes he'd forget his water and he'd look around. And he says, where are those young people? Where are those young people? Get a bottle and just gulp it down. And I said, was that good? He said, oh, yes. He said, well, let me tell you about the living water that Jesus offers people. And this happened week after week after week. Ali was especially impacted by Joe, who consistently shared his faith with him and was not intimidated by Ali's question or his attitude. Now, sometimes after Ali got off of work, Karen would offer to give him dinner. The owner of the hotel would go into the kitchen and cook a steak for him and bring it out to him and serve him this was just so shocking to Ali. He saw this lady living out her faith and loving people. His experience with the followers of Jesus in Myrtle Beach had a huge impact on his life. In the following summer, Ali was once again drawn to Myrtle Beach, went down, he served as a lifeguard, and went through all of the things that I've explained for you another whole summer. <clears throat> When he returned to college after that second time, he decided to change his major from business, uh, from uh, engineering to business and to finance, economics. 
he set a goal for himself to be the wealthiest Muslim man in the world. That's a pretty big goal. <laughs> I mean, he didn't set it to be wealthy. He set it to be the wealthiest. Think about all the, Arab, uh, the oil sheikhs he's competing with. That was his goal in life. And in the last semester, just before the last semester, he dropped out of school or took a past semester so that he could take an internship uh, at a financial firm that he had been offered. But before he returned to school, another firm on Wall Street had their eyes on him and asked him to come immediately. Don't even go back to school. He said, I'm not finished. He said, we don't care. Come now. We want you right now to work for us. So he thought he had it all made. His dreams were coming true. He would become rich. He would become famous in his own mind. What Ali did not see was the coming economic downturn of 2008. And as things began to crash in, Ali became embroiled in financial troubles. Ali was forced to leave Wall Street and take a job as a stockbroker in Omaha, Nebraska. You can imagine of all places to go to. Everyone on Wall Street said, you're making a mistake. This will pass. Don't go. Don't do it. But he had to pay his bills this week. And so he took this job. His pride was hurt. His dreams were feeling crushed, but he had run out of options. And so the Omaha company offered him the opportunity to work while he finished and earned his security and exchange commission. The first week on the job, Ali had another bump. He noticed someone in the office who was dressed better than him. Now, that might not seem like much to you and to me, but that was devastating to Ali. He had come to Omaha with the Wall Street, the New York fashion. He was the look. He, everything about him was the look and upward mobility. And so his pride was hurt. How could this hillbilly from Omaha, that's how he thought of Nebraska, be a better dresser than him? So he decided he'd make friends with this guy and find out You know, what was the underlying story? And uh, so remember, Ali's always driven to be the best. He could not stand to see this man the way he was dressed. So one day he found him sitting alone at his lunch, and he said, I'm going to join the table. He came up to the table and uh, said, do you mind if I join you? And Thomas was extremely welcoming. Uh, Before Ali sat down, He saw two books on the man's table. He assumed they were the latest hotshot stock books and how to make it in this world. And so to begin conversation, he says to Thomas, tell me what your books are. What are you reading? And Thomas says, I'm a follower of Jesus, and I'm reading these books on how to share my faith with people. (laughs) And God has just brought him someone with whom to share his faith. And so from that moment forward, Thomas shared the message of Jesus with Ali at every opportunity that he could. Now, Ali, in his smart kind of ways, said, I'm going to test Thomas's Jesus to prove that Jesus is not the Son of God. He's just another man. He's just a prophet. So hilariously, he asks Thomas this funny question. Could I have a 30-day trial of Jesus? (laughs) Thomas was ready with the right answer. He said, you know, the Bible is very clear not to test God, except in one matter. And I'd like to show you where God has invited you to test him. And so uh, he took him to Malachi chapter 3, and he began to explain what a tithe was and giving 10% of your income to the Lord. And we read in Malachi, bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Well, Ali thought about that. He said, well, I make this, and 10% of this is $20. He says, here, here's $20. Take it to your church. But Thomas was ready for that. 
He said, I have a better idea, Ali. You should take it. Come with me, and you take your $20 to the church. Ali couldn't say no. It would have been shameful to do that. And for the first time ever, Ali attends a church service. It was a much better experience than he had ever had attending the Sunni mosque. People were friendly, and the music captured his heart. But a deal is a deal. That's how a stockbroker thinks, and that's how Ali was thinking. Now, a week's gone by, and I haven't had the windows of heaven open, and I'm about to disprove your God. But Ali had a financial need that Thomas knew nothing about. He was in trouble. Secretly, he wanted God to help him. And when Ali worked at that firm as an intern, remember, he had not been paid according to what he had been promised. They had an agreement when they began, and he ended up not receiving the $4,000 they said that he would receive at the end of the, the term. So Ali had filled a, a, filed a formal complaint with the New York Department of uh, Labor with no success. He'd called them so many times, what do you need? Do you need more information? They said, we've got all the information. Stop calling us. In most likelihood, we will never review your case. One week later, Ali decided to make a deal with the God of Malachi. The very next week, he got a call from a lady at the Department of Labor office. Is this Ali? Is this your address? No, no, I'm in Nebraska. What well, doesn't matter? Why do you want to know? He said, uh, we've reviewed your case. I have a check for $8,000 to mail to you. <coughs> Ali was completely stunned. He said, we've penalized the company and charged them interest. And instead of sending you $4,000, we are sending you $8,000. And Ali said, this can only be the God of Malachi. He'd never had a miracle in his life. He was so excited to call Thomas and say, Thomas, I had a miracle. And he shares the story with him. And Thomas just calmly said, Ali, that's my Jesus. Would you please receive him as your savior? Well, you might have thought that would be enough for Ali, but it wasn't. And Ali became envious, why do Christians get their prayers answered and why don't Muslims get our prayers answered? And so, so he began to avoid Ali. Then God blessed him with a promotion at work. And as he received the promotion, his boss said to him, pick anyone you like in this company and you can sit next to that man and learn from him what he does help you advance your own career. And so Ali picked out Dan. He sat next to Dan, very successful stockbroker. He did not know that Dan was a youth pastor. And so Dan invited him to church for a meal and to come to our Bible study and enjoy the meal that we'll share together. Ali came, and of course Dan was sure that he wouldn't be dishonoring and leave before the study. And what he didn't know was that group was studying the accuracy of the Bible. And how can we know that the Bible is accurate and doesn't have errors in it? And he went week after week and he listened to the story. And he too began to harden his heart some more, it looked like. And he came to work one morning, and, and somebody, the office manager, said, look, I'm just not satisfied with how the office is performing. We're just going to shuffle all the seats. <laughs> it was a strange thing. I said, what's the matter with this guy? And so once again, he was moved. And this time, he was seated next to another man by the name of Kevin. And Kevin did not know Joseph, Dan, or Thomas. But he, too, 
was a follower of Jesus. And God is pursuing Ali at every step he takes and every way he tries to hide. God is after him. And he says, I'm not going to talk to any of these guys. I'm done. And he goes home one night, late at night, dark in the room, turns on television to watch Netflix. It's August 23rd, 2010. Netflix recommendation for Ali, number one, was the Gospel of John, dramatized. He said, well, I'll click it. If I like it, I'll stay. If I don't, I'll leave. And so he hit the play button. Sitting there in the dark, he heard these words. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. John chapter 1, selections from 1 verse 5. Ali began to weep uncontrollably. He reached for his Bible. He opened a Bible to where Thomas, a Dan, had given him a list of scriptures from Romans. And he began reading down what we call the Roman road. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, and uh, God demonstrated his love, and while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then he came to Romans chapter 10. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And Ali just began to weep uncontrollably. And that night, Ali received Jesus as his Savior. He knew his sins were forgiven. And for the first time, he had assurance in his heart that he would go to heaven when he died. The power that raised Jesus from the dead opened the proud eyes of Ali to see why Jesus died on the cross for his sins. And Jesus has been searching for you and for you. He's been searching for you all of your life. You just have not been aware of how much he has been pursuing you. Today, Ali invites you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to experience the resurrection power that Ali has experienced. Ask him to forgive you for all of the sins that you've committed and give you the gift of eternal life. Father God, fill each one with your presence who just prayed with me. If you felt the presence of Jesus coming upon you, write to me and tell me your story about how you have decided today to follow Jesus. Father, thank you for new life and a promised home in heaven. Help us to experience your resurrection power in every area of our lives and to carry that blessed hope to others. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.